Good morning, this is Robin Norgren, and I am over at josiesartschool.com, and I am at brightchildmontessori.com, as well as robinnorgren.com. Welcome, and thank you for uh, dropping in today. So we're going through a series called Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. Yesterday, we talked about how um, we were going to set up the next five weeks where we're just discussing how to reach in and dig deep to find your creative voice, and then how to use that to connect it to um, the events that are going on in your life right now. Basically, um, it's a way to take what's going on in your life and center yourself to really find a peace as your core, and then to really explore what it is you need to be doing, changing, being in the midst of your life and in the midst of any circumstance you're facing. So let's get on with day two. One day stands out in particular as the absolute breaking point for this type of empty living that I was having. My daughter's third birthday. My husband was deployed to Kuwait with the Navy, so communication between the two of us was incredibly random. Meaning during the first three months he was away, we talked on the telephone one time, and I received about one email a week. My daughter had breathing problems during um, this time, and had, it had been going on since she was born. And this particular day, she was having a hard time. My car had a flat. The weather was dreary and overcast. One by one, the guests of the party were canceling due to sickness and the weather issues. I had spent way too much money for a party I was not even interested in throwing. I felt all alone. The party happened. I made my way home feeling unheard by God, but desperate because there was nowhere else to turn. I put my daughter to bed. I went in the living room, turned out all the lights, laid on the floor and cried and kept crying. And I remembered pleading, begging with words something like, God, I can't take this. You've got to do something in my life. I am alone and feel desperate for something, anything to feel that my identity is valuable to you. I have nowhere else to go, Lord. John six sixty eight says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So I prayed the prayer that night and I went to bed with that feeling of being heard, but no real idea of what was coming next. Has there been a time in your life where change was occurring in a way that was unexpected? Are you in a place right now where change is inevitable or unavoidable? What does change look like to you? And what area of your life specifically do you need change to happen? Looking at the following verses, you will see some examples of suddenly moments. As you look at them, take some time today to just sit quietly and look at your um, life through the reflection of these verses. Genesis 37.7 Numbers 16.42, Judges 14.5, 2 Kings 2.11, Job 1.19, Proverbs 28.18, Isaiah 48.3, Daniel 5.5, 5, Acts 2.2, 2, Acts 9.3. Do you currently have a creative outlet that you allow yourself to use as a time for worship? What has that activity done for you personally and in your life circumstances? And how much time are you able to devote time to this particular activity? Have you considered trying a new artistic medium? And if so, what things do you need to do to begin exploring this? And what roadblocks are in the way? Finally, describe the last time you let yourself play. Day three. Over the next few days, I came up with this idea that I need a, ho a hobby. 
I went to a retail chain craft store in my area and roamed up and down the aisles. My eyes fell upon this kid's make a crocheted scarf kit and suddenly remembered that my mom taught me some basic cro crochet stitches when I was little. So I purchased it. And four months later, I had completed a scarf. Yes, that's right, four months later. Can anyone attest to the fact that trying something new is hard? I was so proud of myself, and I began to crochet another scarf. In the midst of this, I reconnected with a former coworker who wanted to tap into her background as an artist, so we decided to meet on a regular basis. And every week, I would make a scarf. Once I mastered the pattern I was using, I bought a book on making hats and took a class to help with reading a pattern. Yeah, I'm still kind of hesitant when it comes to reading a pattern. And one day, I got my first visit from, quote, the muse, unquote. I had a vision for a tote bag. Now, I do not know how to sew. I could only partially understand the pattern that I came across that was similar to this type of thing. That at this point was simply a flash of a picture in my head. But I kept going. Could I do it? 18 hours later, no, not all in one setting. Success. I actually made that tote bag I thought of. Crazy, but validating, euphoric, and also calming. A new connection with God had begun. Soon I began to think more about God as a creator. I began to consider how I might be creative just like him. Psalm 30, 139, 15 says, You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Spend some time thinking about this verse, allowing it to penetrate all areas of your life at this time. What do you think about this idea of the muse? How does it display itself in a Christian's life? Have you ever had a muse experience? Was it a recent experience? Is it a regular experience? If this has not happened to you before, do you believe it's possible? Do you believe it's possible for you? Well, thanks so much for coming by. I hope you, this is something that is inspiring and interesting to you. If you would like to have the hard copy of this book, it is called Your Creative Peace, Find and Deepen Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. And you can find it over on my website at www.robinnorgren, that's N-O-R-G-R-E-N.com. I will be back tomorrow to go to the next day's uh, activities.